Hello. Tom Gimble. Hey, is that Rustin? It is. Rustin Rose <laughs> with uh, Access and Idaho Music Scene. How are you doing? Doing great, thanks. How's it going? It is going wonderful. I'm glad we're going to get a chance to chat a little bit before we get to see you next week. How are things in the vast world yeah. of Foreigner? Yeah, everything is great. You know, we're doing everything a rock and roll band should be doing in the summer. We're having great concerts. And like any other rock band, you know, I just got out of rehab. I had a terrible drinking problem. I was up to three smoothies a day. <laughs> and that's just too many carbs, you know. <laughs> People think it's good because of the protein. You know, it's labeled like a protein shake. That's just, you know, they might as well say milkshake for grown-ups, you know, with that kind of sugar content. you got to hang on to that rock star figure, right? <laughs> <laughs> Carrot juice is very popular, too. Wheatgrass, kale, all those kinds of things. That the Rock bands at this point in our lives, that's what we're into. <laughs> Now, you guys just finished up a short tour over in Europe. You hit Germany and Switzerland to sort of round that out, including a performance at Wacken. Yeah. Was that sort of strange, playing at one of the biggest metal festivals in the world? It was It was incredibly comfortable, and I was amazed. We're always amazed. We do a lot of those festivals every summer. Over the years, we have done a lot of those festivals, and uh, people respond to this music uh, across all kinds of musical borders, boundaries, uh, limits, and, and we have people afterwards telling us how much they enjoyed it, you know, really cool metal-looking people with the spikes and the earrings and everything going, man, that was awesome! So uh, I'm just so glad that this music transcends all the generations and all the genres and uh, there's plenty of rock involved. So uh, Jukebox Hero works just fine. Absolutely. Well, many of them in Europe's always been more open-minded than we, unfortunately, in America have been. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, Yeah, that's you a good know, point. They don't that, have those strict boundaries. Yeah, the, the, the music of Foreigner resonates across all forms of rock and, and metal because it started, you guys started out as sort of a hard edge band back in that era obviously it wouldn't be perceived that way these days but you know there's still that continuity <laughs> so anyhow yeah. you guys released your live unplugged album earlier this year tell us a bit about the record it was something that we enjoyed doing so much taking these songs and stripping them down to the bare bones you know and they just sparkle it's like a diamond it's the writing it's the quality of the craftsmanship in the songs that uh, Mick Jones has, has woven in there, obviously. And it just, it works really well. People like the sound of, of plucked acoustic instruments, so clear and pure. And we have a great uh, vocal band with Jeff Pilson. Obviously, Kelly Hansen, our singer, is just tremendous. And so we get to back him up. But we do really enjoy doing the layered background vocals. And in the acoustic setting, you can really hear that. You know, it's a featured element, so it doesn't get uh, washed away by the symbols of the real rock band. <laughs> but anyway, we just have so much fun with that. I get to play sax and flute. We, we rearrange some of the songs, and we put some sax on Cold as Ice and, and crazy stuff like that. It's just fun to experiment with, and uh, it just works really well at the end of the day. Absolutely. People forget what a fantastic voice Jeff has, too, but the album really highlights how strong the songwriting yeah. is and how well those songs still mm -hmm. hold up today. And like, Cold as Ice has that rather jazzy feel to it, especially with the sax. Dirty White Boy has some real boogie feel to it. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, like acoustic bass, Jeff Pilson takes a bass solo. You know, unheard of, but uh, we, we decided that's the exact reason to do it. <laughs> and also because he's so great. He's, anyone that doesn't know, uh, Jeff Pilson is just a tremendous talent. Uh, he used to be in Dokken and uh, played with Dio. And he, obviously when Foreigner regrouped in 2004, 2005, uh, Jeff joined up then. And uh, he's been such a powerhouse ever since. Absolutely. I hear he might even get back together with Dokken for a Japan run. That'd be kind of cool. So, <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. He's going to do that during our break. He's going. He's, they're going to have the dock and reunion during during the foreigner vacation. Nice. That'll be pretty cool. Now, you guys <laughs> did sort of an acoustic tour for the album, and I noticed. Say you will. You uh, were doing that acoustically th through part of the tour, but I noticed it hasn't been in the oh, set yeah. lately. Are you going to be doing any acoustic numbers on this mm -hmm. leg of the tour, or is it just going to be all electric? Mm -hmm. Yes, if there's time, uh, we definitely do. Say you will. It's usually just a question of time. Uh, if 
but uh, ordinarily, if it's our show and, and there's enough minutes permitting, we will definitely be doing Say You Will. We've been thinking about adding a second song to do like a little acoustic section, but right now it's the one song, and uh, that's our acoustic uh, interlude in the middle. It's a wonderful arrangement of Say You Will done by Jeff Filson, so uh, it's great to uh, really strip it down and, and people can hear what we sound like as an acoustic band. Nice. You get to break out your flute on that one, too. So, <laughs> Yeah! Yeah, I love doing that. It gets all psychedelic in the intro. And now, besides Mick, of course, you are the longest tenured member of Foreigner at over 20 years. What stands out most for you over the last two decades you guys have been doing this? Well, I think it would be uh, just being able to work with Mick Jones and, and watch and learn. You know, a lot of p- people like Mick they don't explain very much you just watch watch and learn by by seeing you know i watch his hands on the guitar and i see how he plays these songs and that has really been revealing to me you know how much uh brilliance is is not just in the songwriting but also in his guitar playing and uh there's these wonderful elements like some flamenco and, and funk that he has got going on he's got everything going on so i think that's been my bigger biggest pleasure is the uh, honor of working with mick and he's one of those many guitarists, him, Dave Manichetti from Y&T, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, very underrated yeah. guitar players who have done so much for music. So Yeah, it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You are a multi-instrumentalist yourself, guitar, keyboards, flute, saxophone, kitchen sink, whatever you want to throw in there. Do you have a, <laughs> do you have a passion for one instrument more so than the others? Whichever one I'm holding, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that has my passion. I try to pour my heart and soul with whatever's going on at the moment. And uh, it's funny you know, because I, I, I relate sometimes to, to golf. And, uh, it's a strange correlation, but music and golf, they do have a lot in common, a lot that's different also. But the, the focusing on the moment, on the present, that's one thing that I see that, that both scenarios share. And I, I remember thinking, we're playing a song and I'm just focused on playing that song. A double vision I'm just I love playing that guitar part on a Les Paul through a Marshall you know that's just that's just so much fun and that's what I'm focused on and I'm loving it with all my heart and then when it's time to jump on a keyboard or grab a sax same thing I'm just focused on that instrument so I don't really have one that's a favorite uh, unless it's in my hands <laughs> that's a lot of instruments though to keep your chops fresh on though <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. It's so true, because we're, we're on break, and you're right. I'm practicing that saxophone, keeping those muscles in shape. You're absolutely right. So, and guitar, too. We've got, we got to keep our hands in shape. Yeah. Now, you've played all these songs thousands of times. Is I know you love getting on stage and doing them all and seeing the fan reaction, but is there a particular song that still mm-hmm. gives you the chills every time you start playing that the intro to it or something? It starts and you see the fan reaction, maybe more so than the others? Well, Urgent definitely has that adrenaline uh, rush. It's a, it's a wonderful part of the show where we try and kind of step on the gas pedal a little bit and raise the roof, you know, and I've got the saxophone. I'm just losing my mind. So it's that's pure adrenaline uh, from, like, going out on a tightrope, you know, with hitting those high notes on the saxophone and Urgent. That's really what it feels like. At, at the same time, it, for me, it also feels like being a little bit unconscious, because I don't always remember what happened. At the end, I'm kind of like, whoa, what just happened? You know, I really clock out, in other words, and just let the music take over. Like if, uh, if you're jumping in the ocean and you hit a wave and just let it take you, that's really what it feels like. So uh, from an emotional standpoint, that was yesterday. Uh, when we play that, I, I do get kind of goosebumpy. I just love that song and the message and the harmonies and the chords, everything about it big favorite of mine so that's my goose bumpy song and the other one is a uh, pure shot of adrenaline straight to the heart nice nice all right so foreigner made an album of new music can't slow down back in 2009 which was a great record but nothing new since i've talked with a lot of bands lately our friends and sticks kiss who have said there's no point in classic rock bands making new music anymore because the radio stations won't play it everyone's stuck in the past uh-huh. is that where foreigner uh-huh. is do you think or might we see new music from the band down the road Oh, I think there's always going to be new music. Uh, Mick, Mick Jones is one of those people that is always writing. You know, that's why he's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame with Lou Graham. 
so he, he always has something cooking. He's got like this cauldron that he's stirring. We worked on a few songs in the studio earlier this year, and we're not sure how they're going to be released or, or where or when, but it's, it's in the works. And I think that it's a situation where we just need to adapt to the, to the world we live in. And, and it seems pretty simple that you don't have to do a whole album of 13 songs. You know, people are going to pick the songs they want. And, and so you really just you can release one or two songs and possibly a video or something, and, and off you go. It doesn't have to be a three-month or six-month project of making this giant album. So I think that's something uh, that we can hope to see uh, either this year or next year. You know, it's just, it's great because they can end up in a movie or, or find a home and uh, people can just grab them off the internet, they can grab them off our website. You know, it, it's sad that the music stores are gone, but it is kind of easy. You can just go to the website and you click and get, get whatever we're releasing. True. Plus, we've got short attention span theater these days with the ability to get things so quickly. So <laughs> that, yeah. that album was it's all tailored for that. Yeah. And the new album was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like I said, too late definitely mm-hmm. had that classic foreigner vibe to it, but it's not even in the set at this point. Is that due to lack of fan response or just a headache of trying to shoehorn in all the hits they expect to hear? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's, that's kind of more like it. Russ, it's just, there are, are only so many uh, songs we can play. So, that one, I love what you're talking about, the boogie kind of shuffle that's in there. Yeah. And uh, it, was t- it was so much fun to play. Uh, Jason Bonham, I think, at the time, we were doing it. But, it, yeah, you're right. There are too many great songs. We have to put the hit songs in. And when you put all the hit songs in, you have a full set list. And it, it, we even have to leave a couple out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're constantly teasing Mick, you know, oh, nice problem to have, too many hit songs. Yeah, nice. Can I play for three hours? You know, at our age, we can't play for three hours. You know, but, <laughs> and you said this the short attention span. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, plus people are always yeah. looking through their phones. All right, so a couple of quick ones before we get out of here. If memory serves, uh-huh. and I'm an old fart, so I could be wrong, but I could swear you also toured with Aerosmith back on the Pump and sure. Grip tours, where which was just before you joined Foreigner full time. And that was sort of during yeah. their renaissance period. Those were huge tours. What do you remember most about that uh-huh. period? I think it was the, the feeling of being comfortable in front of these gigantic crowds. You know, Stephen would just start talking to you. Hey, what are you doing up here? You know, it's like, what's going on? One night he, he soaked my saxophone reed in Tabasco sauce oh, for, for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would come up to me right as I was trying to play it. And he would just he would just be like six inches from my face, going ha 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 ha. And I'm trying to play this Tabasco read. Oh man, there was just so many things like that. But overall, it, again, it, w- it was the honor of working with those guys, uh, especially Stephen and Joe. But all of the the whole Aerosmith band they uh, they were really gracious to me and and they I learned so much and we had a lot of laughs and a lot of good times and the shows were just tremendous they were really really uh, in their power mode at that point everybody was lifting weights and drinking wheatgrass we were taking blue green algae you remember that face. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. And it, it was just one thing after another. You know, there was Woodstock too, and the Grammys and the MTV award shows. They would just keep going and going. The giant festivals in Europe, 100,000 people. We thought that was big. And then Woodstock was 200,000 people. We thought that was big. So I was getting comfortable with these big numbers. And that really set the stage when I came to Foreigner. We were on live TV. And they said, uh, midnight on New Year's Eve, we want you to hit the high note in Urgent, right at midnight, on TV, and there's going to be like 65 million people tuned in. So <laughs> I was like, okay, it's a good thing I got comfortable with those bigger numbers. And uh, really, just the, the joy of, of, of playing music with people at that level, those guys are you know, obviously some, the best in the business. So the way they play together, the way they rock and lock Joey Kramer, Tom Hamilton, Brad. I remember the first day of rehearsal, Brad said, hey, if you need a hug, you know, (laughs) I'm your guy. Uh, Really supportive, so nice. And I ended up playing tennis with Tom Hamilton quite a bit all over the world. I remember rooftops in Japan and outdoors in Australia. So tons and tons of of, uh, memories. I could write a book. (laughs) But uh, 
really it was the fun of, of singing and playing with them it, a lot of it was singing these soaring harmonies with steven tyler i would sing the high parts and uh songs like crying and crazy have these big two-part harmonies and i'd be on top so it really did feel like soaring you know when you're singing at the top of your range at the top of your voice top of your lungs and when it's coming out just in right in tune uh with steven tyler that's that's quite a thrill Last question, just for fun, um, you know, because I was thinking back when I was getting ready to talk to you. Some of the earliest albums that were game changers for me were like that first Foreigner album, that first Boston album, and whatnot. And I'm sure there have been records throughout your life that will, were mile markers or life changers, if you will. Can you give us two or three albums that you still continue to return to that never fail to lift you up or move mm-hmm. you in a big way? Sure. The first one that jumps into my mind is Keith Richards' Talk is Cheap. I uh, I just got that on vinyl and it it still sounds as good as when I first listened to it. That's one of those albums that grows on you. The first time you listen to it, you might say, "I don't know about this," and then over time, you know, because there's a lot of space in between the notes and it's it's very sparse, uh, but so rich with quality. Uh, so I love that album, especially on vinyl, because when you said. Did you say album or record or something? Yeah. It made me think vinyl. Yeah, on vinyl. There's so many good ones. I, I still listen to the Beatles' Abbey Road on uh, vinyl and the Who, the Who's Next. And Quadrophenia sounds phenomenal. They've done some repressings. On it. You can buy it like new, Quadrophenia on vinyl. Throw that on your turntable, and it's like Keith Moon is in your living room, you know, playing the drums. It's phenomenal still to this day. And that holds a special place in my heart. You know, when, when you're growing up, the albums that meant a lot to you always do, I think. Have you noticed that? Oh, absolutely. And, and I do, and I miss yeah. the vinyl, too. I mean, there was a certain scent to it, a certain aura and mystique to just sitting there for hours looking at the liner notes and the pictures and uh-huh. all that stuff. I miss that's it. What, that's what people did. It's coming back. I hear, that, I hear it's coming back. Young people are collecting albums again. Uh, I don't know if it's here or over in Europe. They actually are doing 78s. They have DJs that come around and they play the old 78 records and it's kind of a, a kind of a craze. Uh, but they like, they have to have an old fashioned record player to play them. And it sounds real brittle and bizarre, but people like it. You know, at, like in a special at a gathering, they'll get a DJ that plays that old fashioned 78 music. So I'm sure the 33s are right behind there. That'll be a, a specialty item. But I like the sound. It just sounds more complete to me. It sounds my ears are happier. Uh, it just makes them makes them feel like they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know, listening to music in the analog world, it's uh, I think it's more natural than the digital world. But obviously, both are great. And uh, I think music is really the universal magic. Absolutely. Perfect way to end it. Tom Gimbel, Foreigner, going to be here in Boise on the 24th, out on tour. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to catch up and talk. It's been an honor. Hey, thanks, Rustin. It's great talking with you.